If you've heard about mindfulness and wondered what all the fuss was about, you may enjoy today's episode of the Steps and Tools podcast because I'm going to answer the simple question, why mindfulness? Why mindfulness? And I'm going to do it in a way that is kind of a fast, super fast, no-nonsense introduction. Welcome to the Steps and Tools podcast. I'm Dr. Greg Hamlin, and today I want to make a few comments about why mindfulness is valuable. And we're going to do that by looking quickly at what it is and how you can get started doing it, and in particular, what are the benefits of doing it. So let's start with what is mindfulness. There's a great quote in the book by uh, Susan Smalley and Diana Winston about mindfulness, and it's from um, a book about Winnie the Pooh. Well, said Pooh, what I like best, and then he had to stop and think, because although eating honey was a very good thing to do, there was a moment just before you began to eat it, which was better than when you were, but he didn't know what it was called. And what that quote is, is really wonderful because it highlights how there are certain moments in what we experience where we have an awareness, we're fully present in the moment, and we're aware of of all the, the wonderful things that are going on. It could be eating a piece of chocolate. Um, it could be a, a good, uh, you know, a, a taking a sip of a very good wine. It could be uh, seeing a sunset. It could be petting your dog. But there are these moments in life where we can be fully present. And really what the practice of mindfulness is and what the practice of mindful meditation is all about is cultivating your ability to experience these moments. It's developing your inclination to be aware and fully present in the moment. I've been a skeptic of mindfulness for many years. Um, I don't know, it just sounded so kind of outer limits, out there, um, hocus pocus. I guess I had images of Buddhist monks, um, and I don't know, for, for me that wasn't really an attractive image. And um, But then I took a course from UCLA a year ago on mindfulness and began to practice it. And I was amazed at how it started, the benefits started to sneak up on me over time. I didn't even practice it uh, as consistently as as we were supposed to in the class. But I did find that my capacity to experience joy and to be able to really enjoy the sweetness of of different experiences was was greatly enhanced. And um, since then, I've been in advising my clients and recommending to them that to practice it. And it helps with all sorts of things from depression to anxiety and other things. There's not there's nothing magic about it. And it's not a substitute for other things. But it does really enhance a lot of um, our experience of life. So mindfulness is, is an awareness, a sense of being awake to what's happening all around you and, and oftentimes what's happening inside you so that you're experiencing life for, for all it's worth. And there are some real good benefits of practicing mindfulness. And one of them is for the area of emotional intelligence. You know, one of the two of the key factors in emotional intelligence are self-awareness and stress tolerance. And Practicing mindfulness, even just a few minutes a day, can help you become more aware of yourself. And self-awareness is uh, a key, is such a a fundamental aspect of emotional intelligence because when you're more self-aware, it allows you to be more aware of other people. So it begins to help in your understanding of people and your relationships and how you communicate with people. The other aspect of emotional intelligence that is helped by mindfulness is stress tolerance. You know, when we're able to handle stress and we're able able to 
keep ourselves kind of in the right zone, even when other people are wigging out, it allows us to be more savvy about the situation and about the people in it and about problem solving and, and what to do next. But the benefits of mindfulness that really strike me are in the area of just pure happiness. You know, how to be a happier person, how to just enjoy life more. And it struck me that there are three ways, three specific ways that mindfulness could make us happier. The first is that it, 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 the practice of it teaches us to how to savor what's good in the now, in the present. So a lot of times we, 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 we tend to store in our memory things that are negative and we tend to think about them more. And the things that are positive, we just say, well, that's okay. And we just would blow right by it. But mindfulness helps you to savor what's good, what's, what, what is, the, even whether it's sensations or experiences or thoughts or insights or encounters with people. It helps you to savor what's good just the way you would, you would, you know, eat a piece of fine chocolate that, you know, that you take 20 minutes to eat one little square of it because it's so good. You don't want it to end. So the second way that it makes us happier is that mindfulness helps us remember what's good so that we can savor it again later and even repeatedly. So it's an interesting thing about the mind. We we tend to put things in long-term memory that have some emotion connected to it. You know, you think about all the things you see and hear and experience in a given day, and most of the things that happen to you, you don't remember. They just they just go right by you. They're insignificant. But when there's emotion connected to it, like if somebody yells at you or, um, you know, you get some really good news, if there's emotion with it, those that's what helps memories and information get filed into your long-term memory. So it's not in that throwaway short-term memory any longer. Now, when you when you understand that, then you can see the problem of if if we if we tend to store the things that are negative because they have negative emotions attached to them, and we tend to gloss over the positive, we're going to become more negative in our outlook in general, and we're going to be less happy. What mindfulness does is it helps us experience good feelings with the good things that actually are around us and that are happening and things that are happening inside us, so that we store them. And so then they become part of our chain reaction and chain of association of positive memories. The third way that mindfulness can make us happier is that it can move us away from those negative chains of thought because you just plain have more access to positive memories. Because you're storing positive memories and they start grouping together under certain topics and under certain emotions, you have more access in general to positive networks of association and things that, and, and interconnected thoughts and memories that are positive. When you have more access to those things, you tend, they tend to be on your mind more. You tend to not go right to the negative as fast. And you tend not to stay on the negative as long. And the net result is that you have a more positive, happy outlook. So these are just some of the benefits of mindfulness, and they're, they're not insignificant because when you start practicing, you start to see how it works and how, the, how it benefits you. So then the question finally, before we stop here, is how do you get started? Uh, what's, the, what's the easiest way to just slide right in and get started? And I would say that the, the best way I've found is in a little app that you can download for free on your phone called Headspace. It's got a white icon with an orange dot in the middle, and they'll there are some in-app purchases, and they'll try to sell you you know on that. But the first ten days of ten minutes a day are free, and I have had clients who just repeat those ten days, and they never buy anything, but they just use it for free. So download that app and just sit in a chair without any distractions, and press play, and just follow the instructions, and you'll be on your way to practicing mindfulness. 
Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Greg Hamlin. You've been listening to Steps and Tools for Emotional Intelligence. Thank you.